So I think we are live. So this is the next uh, request video I'm going to be doing this morning. So and uh, it says, uh, I believe we can all see this. I am engineer AD. Apologies about the camera now. I won't be able to share that for one or two reasons. So we have a question before us and I decided to do it because uh, it is directly to me from the mail. We have a RISA. Please kindly help me with structures of chain isomers of uh, 66H14 and please also write the IUPAC name. A video will help. So, so if I'm to guess, I think this is a beginner and uh, we have to simplify this as, as 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 possible as we can. I just don't know how we are going to do this. But I believe uh, you are going to watch the video, that is sure. So if you are going to watch the video, they are just simple things you just need to keep at the back of your mind. So I haven't said that. The first thing is to just uh, let you understand how to get chain isomers or isomers of uh, arcane. This is an arcane. So C6H14 is basically an exene. How do I know that? I actually know that because the general formula of our cane is a CNH2N plus 2. So that is just my way. So, and these are six carbon atoms. I believe you have been told the first 10, at least to the first 20, depending on your level and your school. So, if we are able to understand that this is an exane and it's an example of an arcane. This is a single bond saturated compound. So we can predict the chain isomer. Chain isomer, the first one you draw is the structure of this, which is we call N exane. N stands for the normal. So let's do that. I think this is simple. There are six carbon. You start the first one with a CH3. So that is the first one. Then the other will be CH2 until you have six of this. This is one. This is two. This is this is three. Then this is uh I'm going to four. I hope you're there. And this is five. And the last one will now balance the CH3. So this is what we call the normal structure, and we call this one the N exine. Now, also, also, also before we move forward, you can also predict the total number of uh, the total number of isomers for an arcane because they are single bonded. But the best way, like I do tell students, is always, always, always keep it in mind. You just have to know how to change the position of your carbon atom. So as many times as you can change the position of, you know, bringing it back and forth, changing the position and seeing if it satisfies the number of uh, carbon and hydrogen. Here you can see this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, and if you count the hydrogen, three plus two is a five, five plus two is a seven, seven plus two is a nine, plus two is a 11, very good. And uh, 11 plus three is a 14. I hope you understand that. So the next one, I'm just gonna flip this, look at this now, in another simple way. So this, you're gonna have uh, something of this. I'm gonna put the CH3 first, you can see which is the methyl, or you say the acyl group. So then instead of writing at the second point here, watch this. Then I'm going to remove one H from here. I'm going to have CH. Then I want to what bring the long chain. Then the H I've removed, and this guy now, you know, it was CH2. I'm going to shift it and bring it down. The H is going to move here, and this is going to bring CH3. And that is the method we, we use in chain isomerism. So what I've done here is I removed an H here, shifted it towards this position. Then I'm going to write the rest, which is this and this and the last one, which is CH3. So it's just about shifting the position of the grant. And that is what I've done here. So there now you now start your naming. The IUPAC naming, I believe you know how to name, naming of organic compound. For Akins are very straightforward. The one closest to the long chain. The long chain here is this one that I shifted by moving H here to this point. So now here I start from the first one, one, two. So on the second carbon atom, I believe you can see on the second carbon atom, this is one and two. 
on the second carbon atom, I'm having the methyl group. So we write this one as two. Then you have dash. It's important you know how to write methyl. Then the carbon atom on the straight chain is longest carbon chain, as you can see on the straight chain here. It's not necessarily it should be a straight chain. Sometimes this can be what the branch chain. But here the longest one is one, two, three, four. And five. I know you know this. You only want me to help you write the structure or for you to get it once so that when you get to further ones, you would be able to understand. So this is two methyl, five carbons are called pentane. And that's the second one. So we follow the same sequence to the same pattern in sequence to write the third one. So let's do the same thing. Now I'm going to shift grant. Instead of putting this guy and this guy at this second position, I want to shift it to the third point. And let's see, then I will have the next one, like saying 3 methyl pentane. It is also possible. CH3, then I have CH, then you watch, then I have a CH. I told you I'm going to shift this, then I have CH3, then I have a CH2, then I have a CH3. So the only thing I've done in the second one here, which is also an isomer, in as much is giving me six carbon atom and 14 hydrogen atoms so as you can see if you count it you can see that it is more like this but the only thing i've done is i've, I've shifted i've shifted so and in this case now it is no more two it is now what three metal or metal three metal painting now this is where we have to what be extraordinary careful when I say extraordinary careful, you should have asked me that, uh, why can't I shift this again to this point? Yes, it's a very good question. And the simple answer to that, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the simple answer to this is because you can see, the moment I try to bring this one to this point here now, the amount of what? The simple logic of carbon being a tetravalent element will not be fulfill carbon always got itself attached to what four the maximum number is what four so we can this one as one you can see plus three hydrogen that is four carbon is tetravalent you should know that because what the two s and two p orbitals are hybridized so that is not what we are facing today so we concentrate mainly on what we have to do so and if i'm to concentrate to now draw the remaining ones i have three now one two three now the next one now is going to be i'm doing them in sequence it's going to be why can't i now bring these two guys together in one these two branch thing which is the metal now if i try to do that this is what i'm going to have see you always use this as the baseline this is the baseline so you're going to have a ch3 you can see this then i have a ch now watch because i want to bring this guy you can see the long chain here is CH3. Then I have the next one. I'm going to have another CH, which is this guy. Then I'm going to have what? The long chain on that one is CH3. If you are following. So I'm only trying to interchange. And you can see, brought this one here. You understand? Brought this one also here. So that's why I said, use this as a baseline. So I think you are getting it. I believe you will get this. So. I move the H here to join this. I move the H, e, the H here also to join this, to have these two. So I'm only left with the last CH3. You can count the carbon atom. It's always going to be six. You can also count the hydrogen atom. It's definitely going to be 14. So here now I can say one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. Any side I'm starting to name this. I'm going to have uh, the first one will be two. First one is two. The material is on two and three respectively. We say we separate number by comma two comma three then i think dimetal or dimethyl then four carbon chain on the straight chain one two three four that's the longest chain and four carbon is called the bull chain so now that is that then that is not all we have four of this now so we just need to be careful there is still one possibility possibility we still have one more possibility and i can say what is that possibility is is it that clear yes to some extent you might think this should be all of it because we start with a straight one 
we shifted hydrogen from the first one to the second one, we shifted the second one to the third one, we combined the two together by shifting this here and shifting this here, then how again can we actually rearrange this structure to have the same molecular formula, which is the basis of what? Isomerism. And basically chain isomer are just the change or the chain isomer is just a structural isomer that differs in chain. Of carbon atoms so that is what we call chain isomerism so now the last one which is also possible is just the idea of changing the positioning of this guy and this guy now so look at this now if i want to do these two guys then i'm going to do something very funny now we did two three dimethyl butane why don't i put these two guys here at the same point can i do it yes it is possible watch I'm writing the first one, that is CH3. Now I'm going to write the second one. Now, this time around, watch, because carbon is tetravalent. I want to join these guys and this guy together. So I'm going to move this H here from this guy to this place. So I'm going to move here, shift this here. And when I shift this here, I'm going to left only here with C. There is a carbon, you can see there is a CH3 under this before, which is CH3, you can see. So because I'm moving what is here now up down here, so I'm pulling the CH3 here, another possibility. Then remember, I have actually done something. I have moved it from here to here. This guy is left with our CH2. And the last one here is our CH3. So it's just like a toying with our placement of hydrogen and carbon atom and shifting position and possibilities to have what the structure, uh, to have the same general formula so here you can see one two three four five six and the h's are three six nine eleven and fourteen so in this case on you can see if you start from the back to get the longest chain the longest chain is still the one on a straight chain which is the four carbon atoms we call butane so we start naming from the front one two so then we have metal that are now two we call it dimetal so we can say two we separate number by comma comma two so here we have a uh, dimethyl. You can see it's hyphen dimethyl. Then we have the butane. So, so possibilities of the isomer now has been satisfied. So we have a uh, five isomers. So we can say there are five isomers. There are five chain isomers. Chain isomers of uh, C six. H14, or you say structural isomer, anyhow you want to call it, of C6H14. And these are the names normal exene, 2 methyl pentane, 3 methyl pentane, 2 3 dimethyl butane, and 2 2 dimethyl butane. So, guys, if you find this video interesting, you can consider subscribing to the channel and do remember to drop a like button. I'll see you guys soon. You have a wonderful time. Bye for now.